Welcome back to the GSMC Sports Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We will be getting into our third segment here, talking about last night's NBA games. It The conversation has to start with the wild one that took place between the Dallas Mavericks and the Cleveland Cavaliers. One of the best games of the season. The Cavs won 121 to 119 on a Struess buzzer beater from behind the half court line. So to sort of set the stage here, Struess was a hero for the Cavs in the fourth quarter. The They were down by 10 points with 342 left in regulation. And Struess went on a historic heat check where over the course of 67 seconds, Struess went four for four from three to catapult them back into the game. And it was just incredible to see. Like, that from star players to role players, you don't see that level of getting hot really ever. That was, obviously, stakes are different, but that was a little bit of Reggie Miller, um, Penny Hardaway, like that level of getting hot at the right time. It was incredible to see. From that point, it was Donovan Mitchell knocking down a couple of threes, including a step back that banked in for the Cavs to put them up by three points with 29 seconds left. The Mavs responded quickly as Kyrie got a floater to go, and then we just saw some pandemonium down the stretch in this game. The Cavs inbounded the ball. Garland, Darius Garland had the ball. He was hounded. Josh Green got in on the play. Maybe dragged him down a little bit, but also, you know, it could have gone either way. I agreed with the no call. I was listening, I think at the time, it was the Mavericks broadcast where they were saying Garland should have been called for a travel it also could have been a foul. I just think the play on, whatever, let it be. But the Cavs end up calling a timeout as a result of that play, which was their last of the game. So they are inbounding now with a one-point lead, and they throw it away. It was Mobley looking for Struess. Derek Jones Jr. got involved in the play, made the catch difficult. It was pretty bad spacing from the Cavs there. Garland and his defender were right next to it as well. But it goes out on the Cavs. The Mavericks take over with eight seconds left, still down by one. It was Maxi Kleba inbounding it. He throws it in. Mobley tips it up in the air. Luka does a phenomenal job of coming back to the ball tracking it down, driving into the paint, and then throwing a no-look bounce pass down to P.J. Washington, who gets a tough layup to go over the top of Jarrett Allen. So at that point now, 2.1 seconds left. Mavericks take the lead. There are no timeouts because the Cavs just burned their last one, and it was Struess drilling the half-court bomb, officially listed as a 59-footer. This was the second longest game winner in the three-point era, according to basketball reference. So just an unreal ending. The game was great. The back and forth there. We saw Luka getting extremely hot in the second quarter, and he just had a masterful performance as a whole with 45 points. It was Donovan Mitchell who led the, who led the Cavs in scoring in this game 31 points on 11 of 20 shooting 7 of 11 from three but the story was about max struce um in his fourth quarter 21 points shot 7 of 10 from three so unbelievable stuff there luca and kyrie combined for 75 points in this one and they still lost so the cards just may not have been in their favor for this game, especially with some of the shots that the Cavs were knocking down. Again, an all-time heat check from Struess. That Mitchell shot to put them up with three with under a minute left was crazy. And the Cavs shot 20 of 40 from the three-point line. So 50%, it's very rare you are going to win a matchup when the other team is doing something like that. I do think there is something to the fact that 
They added size at the deadline. I think that they've gotten a lot better as a post defense, which is a big thing when you look at the Western Conference and some of the other competitors, the types of size that they have. But I do worry about the perimeter defense a little bit. Again, 20 of 40 is... There's not much you can do about that, and I didn't think that it was necessarily, you know, extremely open shots, especially down the stretch that the Mavericks were allowing, but that is something that I'm just sort of monitoring. It's 50% is a little bit of an aberration. Last thought here is, you know, great job by the Cavs to shoot that, but they still haven't looked great as of late. They are 3-3 three and three in their last six. It was this weird dynamic, I feel like, for a bit there where I wasn't talking about the Cavs. I saw what they were doing, and I was sort of waiting for the right time to talk about it, but I still just don't really consider them to be championship contenders, and I think they are a very interesting situation here where I do still feel like they're a little bit redundant between their two guards and their two big men and you know Donovan Mitchell can be somebody that can get extremely hot I think that they have you know found some resolution there at the forward spot this year where last year they were playing I think they were playing Danny Green at one point in the playoffs starting him at the small forward position they were really struggling there. I think Okoro has been marginally better for them. Levert is solid. And Max Struess, who was not good in the playoffs last year for the Heat necessarily. But, you know, I think they have some more options there. So we'll see. But I still have them outside of that contender tier, in my opinion. Next game, the 76ers and the Celtics. The Celtics come out on top 117 to 99. The Sixers kept it close for a lot of the game. They made a run at the Celtics early in the fourth quarter, but it was Tatum turning it on down the stretch and helping power them to the win. He scored 14 points in the fourth quarter. He finished with 29, 11, and 8. My big takeaway from the game is the fact that we are seeing this Celtics team be able to win in ways other than just relying on the three-pointer. And that has been a big concern for them over the course of the past couple seasons, especially since Missoula has taken over. He's faced a lot of credit in terms of people thinking that the Celtics are shooting too many threes. Well, now we see them have a really bad night from outside last night, and yet they were able to get it done. This is a team that is first in three-point pointers attempted and three pointers made per game last night they shot five of 22 and yet it was them dominating the glass and the paint that was the reason they were able to win this game they out rebounded the sixers 56 to 28 and in the first half they were allowing the sixers to grab too many offensive rebounds that was leading to second chance opportunities and you saw missoula getting really upset with the team once they were able to limit Philly's uh, a second chance offense they really started to take control of this game they scored 64 points in the paint in this one and the other thing they did which is big for them was get to the free throw line they haven't been great at it this season they're pretty middle of the pack they attempt 21.7 free throws attempt per game that was at least the numbers going into this game they shot 37 and hit 34 of them. So again, I just think that the flexibility of this team of actually being able to win in other ways than just relying on the three-point line is big. Now, does this necessarily happen against a fully healthy Knicks team that won't allow you to get 64 points in the paint? Probably. But still, I think to not just keep chucking from three but to find other ways to get baskets was such a huge thing for them. Brown and Tatum both made comments after the game about being able to win without hitting the three and how they thought that it was a step of maturity with them. Joe Missoula called it one of their best games of the season because of the lack of knocking down threes and coming out on top. And the Celtics just got it done on both ends. 
to close this one out against, again, a Philly team that is down Joel Embiid and are definitely struggling to stay in the picture here. But again, I don't think that it's a matter of who they beat, but I think it's how they won that is most impressive for the Celtics in this one. Um, in another sort of not about who they beat, but how they won is the Milwaukee Bucks picking up another dominant win. Now this was against an even worse opponent in the Charlotte Hornets who they just slaughtered from the jump. They held the Hornets to just 26 points in the first half. They had them doubled. They had 58 at the break. The Hornets are not a very good team. I did give them some credit last week when they started 4-0 after their deadline acquisitions came into play, but I've now had back-to-back -back brutal offensive performances after a bad loss. Again, not to the competition level, but the lack of offense that came to play against the Warriors over the weekend. And, you know, just for the Bucks here, again, it's not about the team that they beat, but the defense was such a concern with this organization through their early stretch of the season. They held opponents to under 100 points just once through the first 52 games of the season. They've now done so in four of the past seven games. So a positive step for them. Some of the guys were sort of reflecting after the game, talking about they got to head into the all-star break, sort of take a moment to just settle down, and they've come out looking really good since then and have another dominant win. They uh, took over Philly over the weekend as well on Sunday. So despite maybe some comments from Dame that have taken place the past couple days, which is a little bit weird, um, I think that you know the way that the team is playing at least is absolutely headed in the right direction and they can work themselves into being more of a legitimate contender as long as everybody's on board again that Lillard situation is going to be something to monitor just a little bit at least but elsewhere in the NBA the last game that I really have notes on is the Warriors and Wizards game where Chris Paul he returned from injury in this one. He had missed the last 21 games with a fractured hand. He played 22 minutes in his game back, finished with 9, 6, and 4, and had 4 steals as well. Specifically, he was part of the run where the Warriors sort of took control of this game, where um, early in the second quarter, they were actually down and they went on, it was something along the lines of a 19-4 run when it all wrapped up, where Chris Paul was helping, you know, being a key distributor in that moment, and the Warriors controlled the game from that point out. They had a 23-point lead entering the fourth quarter after a dominant third quarter. The Wizards did get it down to 11 points with a few minutes left, but... They ultimately, I didn't think that there was that much of a chance that we were going to see a real comeback in this one. You know, Warriors took their foot off the gas a little bit after leading big time. I mean, their starters were still in down the stretch of that game during that run where the Wizards made it closer, but they just didn't have at that point the offensive firepower, the Wizards this is, to be able to pull off that comeback in the end Chris Paul came off the bench it's what he had been doing for the majority of the season when he was healthy earlier on now though he has a little bit of a running mate coming off the bench with him that is Clay Thompson so this is going to be interesting to see I'm specifically going to be looking at the substitution patterns to see you know if they are coming in together off of the bench in that first thing are they sticking together how much is Clay Thompson or Chris Paul playing in those clutch minutes. I think that there's a lot that goes into this that I feel like I'm going to have to sort of more closely analyze. But, you know, you have two future Hall of Famers coming off of the bench together. As much as I 
feel like I had turned the page on the Warriors, and I still am not willing to quite revert, especially not after a win against the Washington Wizards. I think that it's definitely going to be a team that has some eyes on them down the stretch of the year and could potentially prove a lot of people, including myself, wrong. They are now 6-1 and one with Clay coming off of the bench. Clay's had his ups and his downs during this stretch as well, but ultimately they have been winning games, and whether that's because of the fact that Clay Thompson is coming off the bench himself or the fact that we are seeing key contributions from these young guys. Draymond Green has been really impactful for them since returning from suspension. All of that sort of boils into this as we see the Warriors. Also another team that was a sleeping giant sort of rear its head into looking more and more like a playoff team by the day. The last thing I'll say on this game and on last night's games is that this was Jordan Poole's return to Golden State and uh, you know really struggled from the field you have to feel for Jordan Poole a little bit in this one I do still feel like there is a level of talent that's there but um I was actually wrong this game took place in Washington so I made that last part up in terms of the return but at least playing his former team and um you know, really struggled from the floor again. Shot just 5 of 17. That's all I'm going to leave it at for there because I think at this point, the Jordan Poole storyline, I just, I want to see him do well, even though he's somebody that <laughs> crushed my dreams a little bit in the 2022 finals as a Celtics fan. I think that there's too much talent to just go to waste there, and I hope that he turns things around. But on that note, we are going to be taking our final break. When we come back, we will be wrapping up with some more NBA talk, specifically a little bit of big picture stuff that has come out over the past couple days in terms of the NBA's competition committee potentially looking into trying to find ways to even out the game a little bit more between offense and defense. So stick with us. We will be right back. <laughs> 